What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical average American here today to react and learn about Canadian space exploration and Canadian space accomplishments. Now, this might come as an absolute shock to many Canadians out there, but here in the United States, as little tiny American children, we were not taught about Canadian space accomplishments or Canadian space history or anything like that. Absolute shocker, I know. As a matter of fact, there's many, many things about Canada we were not taught, but that is a that is a discussion for a whole other time. And I'm glad to be remedying this particular topic today because in America, I mean, America has some not notable achievements in this area with NASA and landing on the moon for the first time. So we were more than happy as little kids in school for our teachers to teach us all about how fantastic, how great the Americans are at traveling through space and how incredible we are, which is all fine and dandy. But there's a lot of other stuff that happened as well. And I know a lot of other stuff that happened in regards to space history and Canada. So I wanna take a look here uh, today at a little video that's going to explain some of the history of Canadian space, ex space exploration with astronaut Chris Hadfield uh, narrating, actually. Uh, so I'm gonna first, before I start that video and learn all about Canadian space history, I'm just gonna brush up a little bit on some precursors I think I should know. I was uh, Googling Canadian Space Agency just to kind of get a grasp in my mind of what the Canadian equivalent to like NASA would be. And I found something called the Canadian Space Agency, CSA, National Space Agency of Canada. I had never heard of it, funny enough. Established in 1990? Is that true, 1990, 30 years ago? I feel like that that's kind of hard to believe. Canada was obviously doing stuff with space and astronauts uh, longer than 30 years ago. But anyway, that's what the Wikipedia says. Okay, here's a little coat of arms. Very cool. Oh, it's got a maple leaf in the Canadian Space Agency logo. Very nice. And this video we're gonna watch is narrated by Chris Hadfield. Absolutely, I mean, has to be one of the most recent, most famous uh, Canadians in the world. Uh, Chris Hadfield is famous in the United States, I'm proud to say. Lots and lots of people in America, particularly who have seen some of his videos and his YouTube videos and his social media videos of him like popping up on TikTok and he's like floating upside down inside of spaceships playing the guitar sometimes <laughs> and like demonstrating how to like brush your teeth and you like use liquids in outer space. Like he's awesome and he's such a great ambassador for Canada and honestly astronauts in general. So it's so awesome that someone like him exists. And I feel like he is such a, he's like gotta be one of the most well-known Canadians in America since Drake and, and Justin Bieber, I tell you, uh, Chris Hadfield. So very cool, I know him. Uh, retired astronaut, engineer, fighter pilot, musician and writer, first Canadian to perform extravehicular activity in outer space, flown two space shuttle missions, and served as commander of the International Space Station. I actually didn't know all that. I just thought he was just some cool astronaut dude. <laughs> That's just <laughs> from Canada. That was cool enough for me, but uh, <laughs> today I'm learning it goes a whole lot deeper than that. I know you have to be a certified genius to be an astronaut, but he's a whole lot more than that as well. Commander of the space station. Amazing, served in the Canadian Armed Forces for 25 years. He was a air fighter pilot. I didn't know that either. Man, that is super cool. Super, super cool. Okay, so he's gonna be narrating. I found this little video, a historic trip through Canadian space exploration with Chris Hadfield. All right, let's take a look. Canada's a nation of explorers, and space exploration is just the next inevitable step. Yeah. Canada started exploring space in 1840. 18, yeah, okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I don't think we were launching stuff into space, but 
We mean like looking up at space with telescopes and whatnot. I was about to say, <laughs> I was about to say, yeah, 1840, way sooner than the Wikipedia said, but I don't think we're launching ourselves into space just yet. <laughs> Where now there's the University of Toronto. We built an observatory. Yeah. We were curious, why do all the compasses point to Northern Canada? And yeah. where do the Northern Lights come from? Yeah. When the Russians launched Sputnik. You know, you can, you can, I'm getting really sidetracked today in some of this, but uh, you can see the Northern Lights from parts of Canada, can't you? That is awesome. Yeah, that must have honestly gotten, like, Canada and Canadians seeing the Northern Lights, like, hundreds of years ago are going like, what's going on here? Like, what, what, what is this? What is that up there? Guys, do you see this? And <laughs> that, that got Canada interested in space. This launched Sputnik. The whole world suddenly realized we don't have to just look up. We can go up. Right. We should start trying to understand space directly. And so starting in 1957, Canada started working on its own satellites. Oh. We named our first satellite Alouette. And it Alouette, that sounds French to me. This is, see, this is exactly what I mean. I'm glad, so we're in like the 1950s now, and we're already like at a part of history. I've never heard this side of like space history before. Alouette. Launched in the early 60s. It made us the third country in the world in space after the Soviet Union with Sputnik and then the Americans. Next came Canada. I had n I literally never knew that. Like uh, <laughs> I've heard of uh, uh, the USSR. Her of course, of course. Don't I've heard about <laughs> the American, you know, exploits into outer space. But uh, there's Canada right there with like with the number one, number two, Canada, number three into space. Literally only like four years, three, four years after. So I, I'm just, I feel like it's so important and so cool to actually get to learn about this, this other side of history, from my point of view, at least. It allowed us to deploy an antenna called the uh, Storable Tubular Extendable Module, or STEM. <laughs> And okay. it became a standard for all satellites all around the world. Really? And when NASA started building the space shuttle, they needed someone to build a huge robot arm. They hired those same brilliant people to build the Canadarm. The Canadarm! The Canadarm! <laughs> I just like saying it. Canadarm! Uh, this popped up like a long time ago. I watched a video about Canadian inventions. And one of them said this word, Canadarm. I was like, okay, a space arm. Now I get it. Like it's all coming together full circle. The Canadarm, and this was something Canada built for NASA because uh, NASA couldn't develop it itself or Canada had the, the resources and the know-how to build this thing that they needed. That's awesome. Like a uh, little part of history of NASA and Canada space working together, Canada building giant arms. So this is a giant, uh, <laughs> as I so eloquently described it, this is a giant space arm? It grabs stuff? Well, what, what exactly does it do? It's a beautifully elegant Canadian design that wow. can grab onto satellites and assemble things together and only takes about the same amount of electricity as one light bulb. What? Not only. What? And only. It's a big arm that can, uh, grab satellites in space. It's attached to our rocket, and this arm can grab satellites and do, do other kind of manipulations as well. That is awesome, and has a great name. <laughs> I can't get over the name. It only takes about the same amount of electricity as one light bulb. Wow. Not only does it represent our country by the great work that it does, but right there, printed on the side, <laughs> is the word Canada. There it is. <laughs> Canada launched <laughs> its name and little flag into space, or <laughs> how else can you put this? Uh, there's probably not many other countries that have their name on a robot arm floating around in space. We built that Canada arm. Yeah. I was so lucky to be the very first Canadian to operate Canada arm. In what is this little graphic? Uh, is Chris Hadfield like standing on the Canada arm there? There's, a, there's an astronaut. Uh, balancing on the tip of the Canada arm, floating out into the nut, the nether, the nothingness. What is going on here? <laughs> in, 
it makes me smile just to think about it. Yeah. Cannon arm flew in space a hundred times. Wow. It released the Hubble telescope. Wow. And then grabbed it again when we fixed it and improved it. It helped build the Russian space station Mir. And we are so respected for building space robots that when it came time to build the International Space Station and it needed a huge permanent space robot, yeah. Canada was trusted to build the space station robot arm. Wow. Canada Arm 2. Canada, I had to be like, what's it called? <laughs> Can Canada Arm and Canada Arm 2. That is amazing. That I had absolutely no idea Canada was like experts at giant space robot arms. Very specific, very cool. Uh, I don't know, that, that, that already makes this whole video like worth, worth it to me, learning about the history of Canadarm. It's bigger, it's more powerful, it has more joints. It can walk all around the outside of the space station like what? an enormous centipede. What? It becomes so important and iconic for Canada that we represent that arm on our $5 bill. It's on the $5 bill. <laughs> wow, this this uh, video is jam-packed with little fun facts. There's a big arm in space that has Canada's name on it, and Canada arm is on the Canadian $5 bill. That, I mean, honestly, that seems extremely appropriate. And so not only did Canada build the huge Canada arm for the space shuttle and Canada arm two for the space station, yeah. but we built Dexter. A, a dexterous manipulator that's what is this dexter i didn't know canada was like such a leading pioneer in all these robots that are really helpful for well apparently the international space station P being on the outside and like manipulating stuff in space what a super cool specialty it's up on the space station permanently and it has helped us build the space station maintain the space station but also do research yeah. Right wow. across Canada, it's the brightest star in the sky. After the sun and then the moon, the next brightest thing up there is the International Space Station. Huh. Our huge robot arms, piece by piece, assembled this enormous human outpost that's orbiting our world. I, I had no idea that Canada played such a big role in this, because I hear all the time, International Space Station, International Space Station, anything that happens, any space news that happens to get to, to me, <laughs> which is a miracle. Uh, and it was all made possible by Canada in a way, huh? Canada arm on the space shuttle would reach into the back pull out this huge new piece of space station, hold wow. it up, and then Canada Arm 2 on the space station would reach down and grab this piece like a, a Canadian handshake. <laughs> okay, okay, Chris Hatfield, okay. Canadian handshake in space. That's good, <laughs> that's good. Um, this, I, I, do they have footage of this? Like the Canada Arms interacting, handshaking stuff in space? Like, do they have actual footage of this? This sounds amazing in space and then attach it, making the space station bigger and bigger and bigger over time. Right, right. It was a multi-decade project. Wow. Julie Payette was our first Canadian on the International Space Station okay. when she was helping to build it right around the turn of the century. Okay. And since then, Canadians have visited the space station. Oh, this is cool. Like, I don't know the names of hard. Well, I do know one Canadian astronaut and a lot of Americans know Chris Hatfield, like I was saying, but Guy, I'm not gonna say any of these names right. <laughs> Why did it have to be French Canadians? I can't pronounce this. Le Liberté, I think he said it earlier. La Liberté, Julie Payette, Dave Williams. Cir Wait, the Cirque du Soleil founder? First, Canada's first space tourist. He's, he was, it's not a professional astronaut. He owns Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> Uh, Julie Payette, first Canadian to board the International Space Station. Dave Williams spent a record 17 hours, 47 minutes outside, like floating around in space during an ISS mission. And lived on the space station, and in my case, even commanded the International Space Station. Yep. Yep. Canadian astronauts have been flying in space since almost the very beginning. Bob wow. Thirsk and Bjarni Trigvison and Ken Money and Roberta Bondar, and then the very first Canadian who flew in space, Mark Garneau. Wow, Mark Garneau? And a whole list of Canadian astronauts, I had no idea. And like, they, uh, like uh, Chris Hadfield, our narrator, is saying, they have been doing this for a long, long time. 
which is fascinating because uh, uh, for better, or, well, honestly, for worse, for better or worse, but mostly for worse, um, I really have never heard much of any news about Canada in regards to space achievements, space exploration here in America. And that's, sa that's super sad to me because I just listening to this video and this history, there's a lot of history and a lot of very significant, very important history that actually really affected the trajectory of like America's ability to achieve stuff in space as well. So I feel like Canada does not get the credit it deserves in regard to all this. And with each step forward in, in invention and technology, Canada becomes more capable of exploring the rest of the universe. True. We are the world's leading robot builder. And right. it came purely from the legacy of what we'd already put into space. Wow. From our very first satellite right through to Canada building space stations. Yes. I'm Chris Hadfield. Explorer of space, explorer of ideas, huh. exploration is Canada. Wow. 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 Inspiring. Nice. Very nice. Exploration is Canada. I like that. Wow. That'll get you hyped up a little bit, won't it? Uh, this video was by the CBC, and I got to give that a like. That was fantastic. And fun to, it was narrated by Chris Hadfield too. That was pretty cool as well. This history exceeded any of my expectations, to be quite honest. I had no idea. And that's a bit sad, but now it's a bit better because I finally know. I can spread the word. Canada built a big robot arm. People listen to me. And they're like, shut up, go back inside. And I was like, no, you don't understand. <laughs> there was a big Canadian handshake in space. You don't understand. And they just l throw me away, <laughs> lock me in jail, say so he's out of his mind. <laughs> but seriously, I enjoyed this immensely. This story was fantastic. This history, so interesting, so uh, relevant. Like the International Space Station, that has to do with countries and work all over the planet, all being made possible by... Canada and its amazing achievements with Canadarm and Dexter. Very cool. I enjoyed this a lot. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Canada and Canadian culture, stuff about Canada I've never learned before, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.